As an artist, I essentially operate a small business in which I can build up my value with each sale or interaction with a customer. I have been in business for more than 20 years and as a small business owner I know how serious this business is and also how difficult. Almost half of the businesses that are startups fail due to a lack of financial support or investors. I never really had this problem because uh, I, I, there's many things I can do to make money but um, due to a couple of dramatic events uh, it has been really hard lately. And uh, the events were COVID of course and then the Hurricane Ian hit my hometown and as a result I lost my home. So now I have to reinvent myself again, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I paint to make sense of the world. I always did that. As a child I withdrew in a corner with a pencil and a piece of paper because I had so many questions and adults could not answer these questions for me. And once I started drawing it kind of reflected on me what the situation is. I probably just got insights by tapping into either my intuition or the, the right side of the brain, my emotion. And that way it, it did calm my, my anxiety. And that's the way you can become really good at something. That's how musicians do it. That's how everybody who's really good at something has a need, an inner need to, to do this often, not only twice or three times a year. Um, it was suggested to me that I would become an architect because I did have this very special gift of seeing three-dimensional shapes a very clear, very sharp. I could also draw them easily. I know that is a gift, but being an architect, I thought that was not a very desirable thing as a woman to be in the corporate world with this special gift. I had no idea how to do this. To be an artist, however, is not that much simpler either. And in my family, there were no artists that I could ask or could get feedback or help from. So I had to, to figure it all out by myself. Again, not a bad thing. I started out as a graphic designer. I studied for that. I could make money with that. I became an art director and photographer. I did many different things. And everybody paid me for my vivid imagination and my unique worldview. As I got older though, I felt more and more the need to express my individual take on things. Again, for the same reason, to make sense of the world. So I started painting. And when I was invited to come to the Netherlands for a painting week, I thought this is a great chance to discover to research my ancestors and to see how the landscape of my childhood and the whole environment has influenced me in my work. And it did and I came back again and I made a whole series about sea and land and the women in traditional clothing. Actually it was very successful in the Netherlands. But I was not living in the Netherlands. And when I came back to America, it was very hard for me to, to make people understand what I was painting and drawing. I'm not really good with words. I'm good with my imagination and the visuals. I understand the, the essence of the visual art. And visual art always has been an instrument of power. It's very powerful. And this is why art is so powerful for a society. Because a community can share the story 
without the words. The words actually become more difficult, but pictures tell so much stronger what has been going on. Now, before I was born, there was a big flood. And when Fort Myers last year got the same big flood, it really reminds me that I had been painting all along this story about floods um, through, through researching my ancestors. Visual art, but all arts, have the capacity to bond people, not only physical, but also cultural. The borders fall, drop away because of that. I want to say something else though, because all along I have been teaching. And the teachings are very important to make uh, students understand how important drawing could be in their lives. When you want to make a career, of course, you need to learn to draw. Just like a musician need to learn the scales and the dancers need to learn their steps, the visual artists need to learn to draw. It's that simple. But even students who do not want to make a career say that it, the, the learning to draw, first of all, is a skill that you never can unlearn, but it also took away their anxiety about life. It reduced the stress. Just sitting in a corner with a, a still life, the same as when I was a child, it, it really calmed their, them down. It was good for their mental attitude a mental state of being. So art on, on many different levels is important for people, not only you and me, but for society, because it can share its symbols, because it can share the story that we all have, the universal human experience. That's what we're talking about here. To not be de dependent on the sale of artwork or even the online classes, I'm giving you the opportunity to be part of my work and, and the conviction that you also share the same feeling of importance, that it's not only important for me or you as individually or one piece of art, but as the whole community to share, to be able to share our values and opinions through the works of art that are made either by me or my students. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to give you a video of 15 to 20 minutes each week, depicting whatever I'm working on at that moment. It could be students' work, it could be a new artist I met, it could be just maybe a thought of me personally about the importance of what I have seen. So please uh, sign up for this and uh, I will keep you posted. I would love to meet you either in person or on Zoom and we go from there.